What happens next with Zach Wilson and the Jets? All that more this episode of the Lot Done Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. They have a special offer for our listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. She is Kate Magic. Check her out on Twitter with her new handle at Kate Magic. Kate, Thursday night football uh, was was something else. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm I'm kind of uh, not not necessarily in a state of mourning, mind you, um, but I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling bad for Zach Wilson because I think we may have just seen his last start as a professional starting quarterback, which is never fun to see anybody uh, at at the end of their career of course there could be other chances we definitely saw his last start i think with the jets he could find opportunities elsewhere Mm -hmm. um but what is next for zach wilson because i don't think it's a a future with new york so you know what's funny is i kind of had that same emotion like zach wilson did not play well at all last i've got a stats right here nine of 18 for 92 yards and an interception the interception was just a Hail Mary throw before halftime. It's, it's not a big deal, but the offense basically did nothing with him on the field. The, the, the offensive yep. line was terrible. They couldn't run the ball. They had like 60 yards of offense in the first half. It was so bad. Um, but I did feel a little bad for him because it seemed like he was getting booed on every play, even when it wasn't his fault, right? When the offensive line was blowing or you know, getting blown up or they, they weren't running the ball. But at the same time, yeah, feels like it's it's over for Zach Wilson in New York. I I think that based on what we saw, like I don't remember a time where you've ever heard such loud and consistent boos for a, a team like this guy. This is his home crowd. I I don't know. I don't know how you didn't watch last night and feel some sort of empathy. It wasn't all his fault. He didn't necessarily make uh, a slew of perfect decisions but um it just it, it feels like this is the end of his era but i mean marcus what what does that really mean for fantasy does this mean buy mike white like would no, you reasonably no. buy into mike white as a, a future quarterback of the new york jets no, no. and i i think mike white could be a an option that they take with them into free agency in the draft, almost like a placeholder. But if you're the Jets, Mike White's nice. He's not the guy to to go up against Patrick Mahomes and Trevor Lawrence and Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow. Like you've got to have somebody else. So I, I whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo, which I think is the one of the worst options, or Derek Carr or a draft pick. I I, I don't see I don't see Mike White being the long term answer here at all. I think that's totally fair. Now, um, if you had one top tier option, if you could play GM for a day, what quarterback would you send to the New York Jets to help the fantasy value? That's been the biggest issue. Yes. Was Zach Wilson for Derek fantasy Carr. managers? Derek Carr. So Derek. you you think that we would see a bump in value for Garrett yes. Wilson? Yes. Wait. For a couple of different reasons. I think uh I think Derek Carr works well. In New York, he's got a strong arm. He can throw through the wind. He's not really a runner, so he's going to stand in the pocket and deliver the ball. We've seen him. Look at Devontae Adams this year. Look at the numbers that Devontae Adams has had. Look at last year with Hunter Renfro. Look at two years ago with Darren Waller. Josh Jacobs is you know one of the best running backs in fantasy right now. Like Derek Carr, while he might not be an elite quarterback, does help um, bring up the value of the, the players surrounding him. And I think he's attainable. Like I think that's the other thing is – I think the Jets could very easily just give up a first round pick for Derek Carr, get better at the quarterback position and move on. 
Um, one, <laughs> one thing I thought was kind of interesting, one narrative that I saw circulating around Twitter. What if we sent Aaron Rodgers to okay, the Jets yeah. a la yeah, Brett I, Favre? Come on. I, it would be I, kind of I fun just to see how the, the New York media will handle it, but uh, I, I don't see that happening. Uh, Kate, I want to ask you about more about Zach Wilson because that's that's what's so fascinating to me. I want to I want to know where you think he's going to go next. Which teams could be interested? Because I think you and I both agree. There's just it feels like it's over. The, the, I, I think it, the it seems city- like the fans and. Yeah, the fans yes. have turned on him. It even seems like the players have turned on him a little bit. A little bit? I mean, wow. I mean, Marcus, like the moment Mike White showed up uh, in, we knew he was going to be starting. The entire team had Mike White t-shirts on. Yes, this whole yes. locker room has turned. Uh, now, I, I think this has to be a team maybe where – We look at Zach Wilson as a potential bridge with upside. Like, I I think this is kind of a gross option, but it wouldn't surprise me at all with the way that they've fumbled the quarterback position as of late. What what if the Carolina Panthers took a chance on him? That seems to be their MO is taking chances on uh, former Jets quarterbacks. On former Jets quarterbacks, (laughs) on former top top tier picks. Um, and kind of recycling them to see, oh, well, maybe it was the system. I don't think it's the system for Zach Wilson, but wouldn't it all be surprised to see him end up in Carolina? Or how about the Saints? The Saints are kind of an interesting option. They've got some solid pieces on the offense. My problem with those two teams, and it comes back to the same thing that's happening in New York, is you're going to teams with defensive minded head coaches that I don't know have the most creative offensive schemes. So would Zach Wilson look better in Carolina? Probably not. I don't think that offense is all that creative. What about the Saints? I, I, Dennis Allen certainly isn't that guy. We haven't seen Pete Carmichael, their offensive coordinator there get a ton out of Andy Dalton or Jameis Winston, whoever's been under center. I, personally, Kate, I'd like to see him go to a team with a really good offensive line and a really good coach slash play caller who's not necessarily going to ask him to start right away, right? Somebody where he can go and sit and maybe take a year off and work on his fundamentals and get some confidence back. What's that situation? I don't know. Maybe the backup in Philadelphia, right? Maybe you go sit behind Jalen Hurts. Um, Maybe you go with San Francisco for a year who, I mean, I know the 49ers really liked him pre-draft something like maybe you go be the backup to Patrick Mahomes for a year. Like I, I wonder if that's the best career path here for Zach Wilson. Now. I think that's the best, best career path, but uh, in, in terms of his long-term viability, but I just don't, I, I don't really see any pathway to fantasy value for Zach Wilson, no, but no. Marcus, like the issue is there's never been really a path to fantasy relevance. He's had four career games where he has finished as a quarterback one for fantasy. That is top 12. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've been, we've been talking about this for a while. We just didn't see the upside with Zach Wilson. We weren't the biggest fans of him pre-draft. But for his sake, I hope, I hope he lands somewhere this offseason because it's clear they're going to have to move on, right? Like, it might not make financial sense to move on for him because he's on a rookie contract, but it's clear he doesn't have the locker room. He doesn't have the fran- or he doesn't have the the fans. Trade him somewhere else and let him try to find success elsewhere. Let's yeah. let's talk about the Jacksonville side of things because this was another really interesting game, Kate. But before we do that, I want to let you know that this broadcast is brought to you by Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car that you want wherever you want it from a community of local hosts browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or a budget across the U S UK, Canada, and Australia. You can book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip or get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday or holiday, find an affordable economy car. If you're on a budget and just need to get from a to B 
or test drive that new electric vehicle that you've had your eye on. Many Toro hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. We also want to let you know uh, that this podcast is brought to you by NHTSA. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every single state, even in the states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong because your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, even your parents can tell, everyone can tell when you are high. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you feel fine when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And remember, driving high is driving under the influence. Drive high, get a DUI paid for by NHTSA. All right, Kate. Uh, let's talk about the Jacksonville side of things. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, 20 of 31, 229 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. Did have a rushing touchdown uh, with 50 rushing yards. You'd love to see that. Um, honestly, my takeaway in this, this game, I know that the numbers weren't off the charts, but Trevor Lawrence is a real deal. Like in the rain with against that Jets defense, like he just he passed the test. That's that's all I'll say. He looks uh like a whole different quarterback, honestly. Yeah. Watching him play this year in comparison to last year, he looks confident. He's he's making decisions and he's executing those decisions. I, I think uh, we have to be all in. Like I, I wanted no part of Trevor Lawrence against this Jets defense, but watching the game, even though it didn't necessarily show up on the stat sheet, like Trevor Lawrence handled the situation. He handled that yeah. defense very yeah. well. Yeah. Um, you love to see the, uh, the, the willingness to run it was the second game this season with over 50 rushing yards. Um, you know, a really underrated part of Trevor Lawrence's game. And I, th I think after uh, every time you have one of these instances where you get to see those flashes, it's just a nice reminder that if, if he's not going to get it done through the air, that he has those physical tools, those physical traits to take off and, and get it done with his legs. Now, for me, like, because uh, Trevor Lawrence, he's already been trending in the right direction. I don't think this does a ton for his, like, his fantasy value in general. Like, if anything, it just kind of confirms that what we've seen over the, the course of this season has been probably just what we're going to get. Like, that we, we feel like we know who Trevor Lawrence is. Um, on the year, QB5 uh, so far, QB... Uh, let's see QB. Ah, my goodness. Sorry. My points per game meter is broken. Uh, <laughs> uh, QB seven in terms of fantasy points per game, 24 passing touchdowns already on the year. And I don't think any of us would have seen that coming, but now I, I think again, confirms what we already know. What we didn't know, Marcus, is that Evan Ingram was going to be, Evan Ingram again. That's what's interesting. He just absolutely torched this Jets defense, right? Like he looked so good. Um, I, I thought he was unbelievable, Kate. I, I really did. I, I thought he was fantastic. Um, it's just so clear that Doug Peterson has figured out a way to use this player. And like, it's nice to see a coach like finally have confidence in Evan Ingram. Uh, I, it's just a joy to watch. I, I can't even put it into words how excited I was to see Evan Ingram last night. Uh, he had eight targets, caught seven of them for 113 yards. Okay, he's going to easily finish as a tight end one this year already at 700 yards and four touchdowns. It's pretty incredible. He's already exceeded uh, his career high for receiving yards, and we've still got 
uh, what, two games left on the slate. Like we, <laughs> we could see some really nice production uh, currently ranks as the tight end three after that Thursday night performance, obviously could see a, a little bit of shifting in the ranks uh, throughout the weekend, but that's top five material Marcus, Absolutely. I think. Yeah. Uh, and I think what's even more important to note with Evan Ingram is that he was on a one-year deal. With he's coming Jaguars. back. There's just no way, right? He's coming back, and I think he's going to get a very handsome yes. payday. As he uh, should. We already saw that this team was willing to uh, pay those who they thought were, uh, you know, worthy of a payday. We've we've already seen it. And I think Evan Ingram is going to be the next one to get paid, which that brings us to the question, Marcus, what is Evan Ingram's dynasty value? Because we already saw, we saw flashes. We saw rookie Evan Ingram uh, just absolutely smash records. He's had two career seasons with over 100 targets. Probably, uh, I'm going to assume, we'll hit that for a third time this year, but he looks like he's taken the next leap forward, which I will remind you, he is 28 years old now, and that is just like the breakout age for yeah. tight ends. Period. So let's talk about where he's being ranked in Dynasty League football. By the way, did you know that we have a new tight end one in Dynasty? I didn't. Mark Andrews right now, tight end one on oh. Dynasty League football. Uh, as of early December, Evan Ingram was being ranked as tight end 17. It feels low right like especially with the way he's played over the last couple of weeks guys ahead of him hunter henry i mean i'm just waiting for you to say yes take Evan i mean yes yes i'll take evan ingram um, <laughs> uh mike Gusecki. evan ingram greg dulcich that one's a little trickier i think it's easily evan ingram oh okay uh trey mcbride evan ingram this one I struggle with because I do like this player, Dawson Knox. Ooh. Um, ooh. Ooh. I'll go Knox there. I, I'd, I'd, he's got a long-term deal in Buffalo. There's some stability there. He plays a lot. I'll As that. of right now, I roll with Knox, but a contract situation could – if we see that Evan Ingram ends up returning to this yeah. Jags offense – I do think that it's conceivable that he... I, I got a really tough one for you. You ready? Yes. Darren Waller. Oh, oh, Marcus. Um, I mean, that's the part part is we know Waller's upside, right? We saw back to back 1100 yard seasons where he was looked like he was in the same tier as Mark Andrews and everybody else, not named Travis Kelsey, but he's struggled to stay healthy. Maybe a little bit of an old. unknown in this offense with Josh McDaniels here. Yeah. Um, I, I give the edge to Darren Waller right now. I, I but would agree. It's just closer than again, you would think. It's much closer than you would think. Yeah. And uh, again, a long-term deal for Evan Ingram with the Jacksonville Jaguars could be the thing that sways in the favor of Evan yeah. Ingram. But the interesting thing, Marcus, is that we're seeing, uh, you know, in terms of ranking, Evan Ingram feels like kind of a value right now. In the beginning of December, there were four mock drafts with Dynasty League football, and his average ADP in those drafts, tight end 24. Yeah. yeah. That's like, that's behind... Uh, Jelani Woods, Gerald Everett, Kate Otten, Mike Gusecki. Like, why is Mike Gusecki the tight end 17 uh, in terms of ADP? I don't know. No I don't idea. know because, like, I I really I can't tell you there uh, whatsoever. But I do think there's value to be had there with Evan Ingram. And yeah. it's a, a position that I think is, is difficult enough to – wrangle in um, some recent trades for Evan Ingram, a 2023 second and third round pick for Evan Ingram. I, I got to assume this is a tight end premium league. I believe so. Yeah, that's probably fair. That's I, I see. I, when you say probably fair, I think that's a great deal. Um, let's see Evan Ingram and 
tight end Jeremy Ruckert in a 2023 fourth round pick. Third, the third tight end for the Jets. Yeah, that's do that one in a heartbeat. Uh, Tyler Conklin for Evan Ingram and a 2023rd through th- oh, 2020. Yeah. Oh my, that's the hardest thing I've ever third round pick. Yep. Thank yep, you. Yeah, that one. That side. Yeah, I, that's the takeaway. Go, uh, go trade for Evan Ingram right now. All yeah. right, Kate, we've got time to do a little bit of promotion commotion uh, at the end of the show. But before we do that, we want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and the World Cup. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, and we know that you do, you can find those at Bet Online as well. It's the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Kate. We just get one promotion guy or to promote from your uh, your bench or from your waivers into your starting lineups in round two of the playoffs. Who do you got? I'm going with Jordan Aikens against yes, the Tennessee love Titans. It. Uh, Titans, they've been a really, really tough defense this year. They're especially tough on the ground. The Texans are not going to be able to run the ball, but I mean, this wide receiver core has been dealing with injury after injury. Um, and looking at the opportunity here, Marcus, this actually has been the one weakness for the Tennessee Titans defense is the tight end position, allowing the six most fantasy points to opposing tight ends on the year. Uh, just allowed Evan Ingram, speaking of, 162 receiving yards, two touchdowns. Uh, the opportunity is going to be there in terms of routes to be run. It's going to be there for targets. Um, even Gerald Everett and Donald Parham uh, combined for 77 receiving yards last week. Yeah. So, like, I, I think this is going to be the way that the, the Texans can exploit this defense all in on Jordan Akins, and I think he's going to uh-huh. be – Uh, a tight end one this week Um, for me it's Richie James for the Giants sometimes whether you're like in a deeper league and you just need somebody to flex that you guaranteed to get you some points I think Richie James is that guy he's available in oh man just about every league I'm looking at it now uh, rostered only in 1.7 percent of leagues on ESPN last couple weeks seven catches for 61 yards against Philly four for 42 against Washington Kate, he's had six games this year where he's caught at least four passes. And if you're in a PPR league and you get four for 50, you're fine, right? Like, obviously, that's not going to win your league for you uh, or win that week, but it's going to make sure that you don't lose. So in a game against Minnesota where they're probably going to be need to, to pass a lot, I kind of like Richie James to, to get you maybe six for 70 and a decent chance to score a touchdown. I like that. I, I mean, I don't like the uh... – I never want to bank on New York Giants, Marcus, because that just feels a little dangerous. I but I, I think the opportunity is there. I'm going to sneak in one more name that is on my waiver wires uh, in my dynasty leagues. Marquise Goodwin yes, he has yep. a tough matchup against the Bills. It's going to be freezing cold, but Marquise Goodwin is 100% going to have opportunity. Chase against Gables. the Chiefs, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry, against the Chiefs. Um, yep. I think – that there's going to be a lot of opportunity here uh, for Marquise Goodwin to actually have a, a decent target share, maybe maybe roll in in a full PPR league um, where you know you you just have uh, some of that you need some of that safety, some of that floor. Yeah. Um, I I think he could be a decent option. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. That is it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making Lockdown Dynasty your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Lockdown Sports Today podcast. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. The Lockdown Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All the same places that you download the Lockdown Dynasty podcast. Check us out on YouTube. Follow Kate on our new Twitter handle, at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy your Christmas. Enjoy all of the games. Uh, And we can't wait to talk to you guys again next week. Bye, everybody.